God came to make us to be containers of him. Amen? Amen. See, I am a container for God. And so um, we just have to remind ourselves of that daily, that we, the Bible said that we're dead in Christ. So if we're dead in Christ, then we, that means we've, our, we've died to our own will, plan, and purpose, and we've, we've adopted God's will, plan, and purpose for our lives. Amen? But we're going to talk about um, the Ten Commandments. Anybody ever hear about the Ten Commandments? I'm actually talking about the Holy Ghost, but I feel like this is actually where I um, should start. So let's look at Exodus. Boy, we're like, boy, oh boy, where are we going today? We're going into the Old Testament. Amen. These things were written for our admonition, for our learning and our instruction. Amen. We can learn from things that people have done in gone, days gone by and learn from their mistakes. Amen? Amen. You know, like um, whenever they tried to touch the, the Ark of the Covenant in an unworthy manner. Well, y'all saw Raiders of the Lost Ark. Y'all know what happens. <laughs> their skin melted off of their bones. No. <coughs> but the word does say we are not supposed to... Um, you know, touch the things of God in an unworthy manner. So um, we need to be holy vessels of God to be containers that God made us to be. But let's look at Exodus in chapter um, chapter 20. And I'm going to kind of um, go down through these things <clears throat> without maybe expounding on too much because this is like a, you know when you go to those really fancy restaurants and they give you this gigantic plate and then they write stuff on it with chocolate syrup. And then they put a little kind of garnish. And they put a little tiny dessert. <laughs> like, well, that was a bust. <laughs> anyway, this is the pretty garnish on the bottom of the dish we're going to build on right here. And so we're talking in um, Exodus chapter 20, starting in verse 1. It says, God spoke all these words. He spoke these words. And he was talking to Moses when he was at the top of the mountain when the glory of God was revealed to him. And he um, wrote all these things on a tablet, right? He said, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. So one of the things we have to understand about God is he doesn't want us. And, and as humanity, we are not supposed to have any other gods before God Almighty. That means we worship God him alone. We have no thing in our life that comes before him. <clears throat> we have nothing in our life that will obstruct us from doing the will of God. And so even in the place of submission, you, we never submit to somebody or something that would cause us to do something that, that's contrary to to the will, plan, and purpose of God for humanity. Amen? Because we live in a day and age where, you know, people prescribe for others to sin. Amen? Amen? <laughs> I just see the top of a ponytail. <laughs> I see a bun. <laughs> so we have to understand that, number one, that God doesn't want us putting any, anything before him. What is a God? God is a number one. So that's putting something else, a number, a little number one, instead of the, in front of the big number one. Amen? Number two. Commandment number two. <clears throat> so then it says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Um, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third, fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. We are all products of Abraham because Abraham loved God and he was willing to sacrifice his firstborn son. And because he loved God so much, we are bet, we are beneficiaries of the love that Abraham had for God. Amen? 
<clears throat> so, understanding that the the um, that we don't make or buy or build anything that becomes you know sometimes you you know uh, people have these Ferraris and um, and uh, what other Lamborghinis Lamborghinis and Ferrettis. <laughs> You know, they have these really high octane, high fast performance cars. And some people have, you know, these huge mansions, you know, 20,000, 30,000 square feet mansions. Now, let me just say, <clears throat> just because somebody has those items doesn't mean that that person worships that item. But. There are a lot of people that have items, and let me just say, it could be a pair of Nike shoes. It doesn't have to be a mega mansion. It doesn't have to be a fast performance car. It could be just a pair of shoes. Something that you have that just is something that you idolize. Amen? You know, when they first put American Idol on, I wouldn't watch the show because they called it Idol. American Idol. And I thought, I don't want any part of an idol. Then I found out it was a singing contest. But then as time went on, I started finding out that uh, maybe it's maybe there is some idolizing going on. And maybe these people, some of these, not all, but some people want to be idolized. But we have to watch those things, especially in this day and age, that nothing tries to take a place in our heart that only belongs to God. Amen. <clears throat> Third command is you shall not take God's name in vain. You know, <clears throat> there's a lot to be said by this, and I'm not going to get into a lot of it, but, you know, you, we've all heard people cursing and using God's name, as we would say, using God's name in vain. However, <clears throat> in um, verse 7, it says, You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. So we have to even watch it as Christians if we're not... Not what we would say cussing or cursing the name of Jesus, but using the name of Jesus to not the extent of the power that's in that name with, with futility. It, we have to understand that there's power in the name of Jesus. That name has been given to us by God. We can never discount that name. Amen? And everybody said. And then in the, <clears throat> the next... The next one is, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. There's something about setting a day aside that belongs to God. We should set a part of every day aside that that time belongs to God. And then we set apart a day in the week. Now we knew the, Jew, the Jews, the Sabbath was supposed to be the first day of the week. And some people wonder whether you, you know, people do the last day of the week. But we should set aside, and in our society, we basically on Sunday have set aside, that's when people go to church. Sometimes, you know, they have morning church, evening church, they have prayer meetings, whatever. That's just a day that in our society that works well because that's when most people have off work. You know, on Saturday people are, you know, doing things. Um, so it just is a day that works where we can come together and worship God and so, but the word of God says that we shall remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That means that day is a holy day unto God. Amen. So, and then the next one, which is five, it says, honor your father and mother. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. We have to remember that. That's a, that's a commandment. <clears throat> then, some of these are, let me just say, plain and simple and easy, and you can understand. It says, <laughs> after it says honoring your parents, it says you shall not murder. And it has absolutely no description of that. <laughs> Basically, just don't kill somebody. Isn't it funny that they don't go into some, you know how they explain every commandment? And then when it comes to do not murder, it just, just says do not murder. Then the next commandment, commandment, it says that you shall not commit adultery. <clears throat> Another thing they didn't explain. They just said, 
don't commit adultery, which is having a physical relationship with another person, amen, that you're not married to. That's it. This plain and simple. Don't be messing around with people that you're not married with. But, you know, Jesus said, if you even look at somebody, if you look at somebody with lust, if you look at somebody that way, you're already committing adultery in your heart. You know, I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, men are built different. You know, men, you know, they're real hormonal. And, you know, let me just say, I don't care what anybody says. The Bible is true. I don't care if you're male or female. If you can't get a control of your eyes and of your thoughts, you need to get in the Word. You need to get saved, and you need to get in the Word. Because I, I, I've heard men preachers, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, but I've heard male preachers say so many things, well, you know, that's just how men are, and women, you got to dress a certain way, or, you know, it's not a man's fault because of women. You know, I want to slap them up one side and down the other, you lying sack. If you got a problem with your thinking, then you need to get in the Word and get your mind washed and get it renewed. Okay, that's all I'm saying about that one. So you shall not commit adultery. And number eight, you shall not steal. That means don't take something that isn't yours. Amen? Is that pretty? Don't take something that's not yours because you don't want somebody taking something that belongs to you. You don't take something that's just not yours. That's plain and simple. It's not about taking a pencil from work. It's about don't taking anything that's not yours. That's number eight. And then number nine, you shall not bear false witness. In other words, lie. Don't lie. Don't be going around lying. A lot of people say, well, you know, why do you lie? You know, people lie so they don't get in trouble. It doesn't matter. You still don't lie. Why well, didn't lie? Because, you know, I thought I might get fired. Don't lie. You just don't lie. These are the fundamentals. These are the ten fundamentals of the Christian life. Amen? And so the, the tenth thing is you shall not covet. That means you don't look at something. You know, you could, you could even look at somebody's car and wish it was yours. And you have that longing in your heart. You know, this, you know, they say you're not coveting is like looking at somebody else's spouse and wanting their spouse. No, this is coveting. means everything. Don't look at anything that anybody has. And, you know, it, it has that envy and that jealousy att attached to it. You know, envy is envy, coveting. That's the same thing. Don't envy, don't covet what other people have because God has a plan and purpose for you. And it's to bless you and not to harm you. Amen. To prosper you. And so God has things for us. And we don't, there's no reason why we should be envious and, and be jealous and, and covet what other people have. Okay, now that was just a really short refresher because it's not something we, you know, give a list of here in this church as far as, but we have to understand that there are Ten Commandments. And um, in Matthew 5, 17, it's Matthew, the book of Matthew. Now we're swinging over to the New Testament. Matthew in chapter 5 and verse 17. We're going somewhere with this. So we laid the, we laid the groundwork that there are Ten principles. You know, of course, if you look through the Old Testament and start reading all the things that God told them to do, I wouldn't, let me just say, there are some things I just read it out of the Bible, I wouldn't even elaborate or talk about it. Sometimes, you know, guy and I talk about some of the things that God said and God did, you know. One time the, the Israelites were in such unbelief and such disobedience, and oh my gosh, let me just say, they were such a pain to God. That God even, this is what God did. He got so fed up with the Israelites. Yeah, God can get really fed up. That doesn't mean he doesn't love them. You know, as parents, we love our kids, but we get fed up with them. And so God was just fed up with his people. So he actually allowed a curse to come on them. They all got hemorrhoids. <laughs> he put a curse of hemorrhoids on them. And you might not know what a hemorrhoid is. Google it later, not now. <laughs> but basically, it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> God was like, they're such a pain in the butt. They have reaped. They have. They. They are going to reap what they have sowed. <laughs> they're a pain in the butt. I'm going to make them a pain in the butt. See, <laughs> there's God does a lot. Has done a lot of strange things through time. I'm not going to get in some of the commands that He would tell women not to do and men to do. 
It was like, there's a lot of details. But these are basically the ten commands that God gave instruction for the Israelites to live by. But in Matthew and chapter 5, because you hear a lot of this, you know, how many of you know that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law? But in Matthew 5, 17, this is Jesus said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law. He didn't come to take the law away. Or the prophets. I have come to abolish. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. That means it's still, those are still the law. That's still the principles of righteousness and holiness. This is God's character. This is God's way, his instruction to help us to understand as we grow to come to know God personally and intimately. He helps us by showing us the way that we should live. That's going to be a benefit to us and to those around us. And of course, we know that in the New Testament, the fulfillment is the law. We live under the law of love. Why? Because love is not going to murder somebody. Love just doesn't murder somebody because they got in their way. Or let me just say, there's a lot of people, we got crazy. I don't know if you ever look at the news. I was telling them, they got so many of these inside What's an inside edition, first 24, uh, Crime Watch. There are so many of these shows, and these shows are on for year after year after year of crazy people and the crazy things they do. And there's thousands of them out there. They don't just kill people. They do some pretty disgusting things in killing people. Killing children and innocent people it's it's insanity so but love doesn't kill people it doesn't murder do we understand that the love of god love god's love honors our father and our mother because because that's what god's love is god and of course he is our father we honor him above all fathers any parent the love of God doesn't lie, doesn't lie about themselves, doesn't lie about other people. The love of God just doesn't lie. So we have to understand that God came, when Jesus came to pay the price for us, he didn't come to abolish the Ten Commandments, to abolish the law. He came to fulfill them so that we might have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can lead us and guide us into all righteousness and truth, which is to, to do what God's commands tell us to do amen and in john 14 here jesus said again in john 14 15 he said if you love me keep my commands his commands are easy if we love him amen so that's what we have to make sure that we have an understanding of 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 what god when god is saying is yes i've given you these commands but don't use the great